Um, all right, so uh, I, I, we're, we're talking about, we're at the bottom of that page, 18 is what it says on my notes, um, but it is Dalton's Law of Partial Pressure, and it is the idea that pressures can be added, and so this is just how we write it, that the total pressure is the sum of all the individual pressures. Um, this other term here is mole fraction, and it is this funky X, uh, which is the moles of whatever you're talking about over the total moles, and it's equal to, you can do the same mole fraction with pressures, so the pressure of substance A over the total pressure. Um, so then the problem at the bottom of the page, I'm just making my list. So that was one of the things I talked about in the previous, on Tuesday night, that making a list will really help. So the nitrogen is, we have one liter of nitrogen at STP. Um, so STP is standard temperature and pressure. So the temperature is zero or 273 Kelvin and the pressure is, uh, we're gonna go with one ATM. And just a reminder that one ATM is equal to 760 millimeters of mercury. All right, and then our other piece of information is we have neon. And so we also have one liter of neon. Um, and this one's at 212 millimeters of mercury and 25 degrees Celsius. So for me, whenever I see a temperature, I automatically immediately change it to Kelvin because Celsius doesn't work with gas laws because gases are always vibrating and so add 273 so this would be 298 kelvin all right and then the last one is hydrogen uh, a reminder and i mentioned this uh, when you're working with the diatomics when they are a gas they are definitely diatomics so hydrogen is h2 and nitrogen is n2 um, All right, so the hydrogen is 0.50 liters, 418 millimeters mercury. And I don't know why I'm making my line going across, probably because of how the space is. And it's at 20 degrees Celsius. So this would be what, 293 Kelvin? Oh, um, Ms. Sherpa? Yeah, go ahead. I think I have something different on you guys my have a you have a different question. I changed the question, didn't I? I see. Okay. Yeah, it's like it doesn't have a hydrogen in it. What does it have? It says that uh, if a chemist mixed 1.0 liters of nitrogen gas at STP with 500 milliliters of neon gas at All two. All right, I'll change mine. <laughs> Go ahead. At uh, 200 at 212 uh, millimeters uh, uh, mercury at 25 degrees Celsius. If the final mix is in a 2.0 liter flask at 25 degrees Celsius, what is the final pressure? All right. So that information is now correct, right? That's why it's always good for me to make mm -hmm. the list. So this was half a liter. Um, there's several ways you can solve it. But basically, and there's no answer, is there? Uh, 467 um, uh, milligrams, uh, millimeters uh, of uh, mercury. So you know what's interesting? I'm pretty sure my setup, yeah, that might be okay. Um, we will see, we'll find out. Um, the total pressure is gonna be equal to the pressure of the nitrogen plus the pressure of the neon. Um, but we have to, there's two different ways you can do this. You can change each one of them to moles. I think that would be the easiest thing. There's like several different ways you can do it. Um, what I would do is for my first step, and I'm not going to work through every problem. I'm going to, this one we, this is the first time I've ever given an answer, so I'm assuming my answer is right. But I would first do PV equals NRT um, for the nitrogen. And you're, you have 
everything. You just need to solve for the N, for the moles of nitrogen. So once you find your moles of nitrogen, uh, which I did earlier, and I found 0 0.0446. So you would solve rearranging, plugging all this information in. Uh, and then the second step I would do P equals NRT. And again, solving for N and this time for the neon. Um, and I can show you my thing in a moment. But I did it all in one step, and so it, it's going to make more sense for everybody to break it up a little bit. Um, and in that step, I got like 0 0.00557 moles. Now, before I go on, I want to mention something that when you plug in, your units are really important. So R, I talked about the other day, uh, 0 0.082057. Um, you guys will have your notes, but again, your tests, you do have a limited time on your tests next on Thursday. Um, so you want to make sure you have your notes really organized. The units when you use R are ATMs. So you do have to change your millimeters of mercury to ATMs. Um, so like you would just change seven, dividing by the 760 to one ATM. Um, and so showing your work, and again, this was, for some reason, I have a different problem. I think I simplified the problem and I never fixed it on there. All right, um, and if any of you are really fast, you can punch that in and we can see, actually we can do that now and see. Uh, when you guys show your work, you would state your formulas. Then my third step is I would do my N total will equal the nitrogen plus neon. And then I would go back and do PV equals NRT again. And I think this is why most people don't like um, partial pressures because there's steps involved. So the final step is I would go through PV equals NRT again. I know N this time and I would be solving for the pressure. Um, and realizing that you would now be using those values for step four, the final values, that you have two liters and 298 Kelvin. Um, so if you want, somebody can try the nitrogen step and somebody can try the neon step and see if you get my answers. And somebody can try step four. So Aaron, I'll have you try the nitrogen step and oh, Edward's probably already doing a step. I don't know, people pick different steps. Oh, uh, for the nitrogen step, are you saying? Uh, My step one. So using the information step. that's just about nitrogen, oh. you have to figure out the moles of nitrogen. I see, okay, cool. Or you can just use the information about the neon and you have to figure out the moles of neon because those we have to add together. There is another way you could do this. There's a totally different way we could do it. I just did a good dyslexic move. All right, so for the moles of the neon, actually I got that. For nitrogen, I got the right answer, the answer that you put. All right, so you may do the neon step. I just did it and I got this. I got 0 0.00570. I don't know why I wrote two fives. 
and I just did it again. And then you would add them up to get the total, and then we would plug in to this one. Um, a reminder, when you do do, when you show your work, but you're going to get practice. The homework sets actually, this is the hardest question. This is harder than anything I think on the homework. Um, always state your formula. You guys can keep punching in and seeing if you get my answer. Always state your formula first in the original form and then rearrange it. Um, and the list is, the lists are nice just because they help you to organize all the information in the problem. Um, but yeah. So like here we would divide by the volume. So this n is the total n of the two. I think I got the different answer of nitrogen. For nitrogen for the first one? Yeah, I got like mm. point zero four five five. Hmm. What did you so it would just be, because the pressure and the volume are just one. So we're just taking one and dividing by um, 0 0.082057. And then dividing by the temperature, which at STP it's 273. Oh, right. Sorry. I thought the volume was 0.098. Oh, okay. Oh, you used the wrong R. Okay. No, that answer is good. Um, Aaron, I saw you came. We're just going over lecture notes, or if you had a question for me, you're welcome to join us. I wanted to see um, if you guys were still in here because I had played a little bit and I had a really, really good game. Oh, whoa, wait. <laughs> what was your score? 3,067. 3,067? Yes. I think you're like 100 points shy of the high score. That's like pretty remarkable, though. <laughs> I'm a little... I'm a little worried when I wake up tomorrow what my emails are going to show me because I'm betting a bunch of you are going to be sending me emails. And so, um, original Aaron, what was your high score? 3,000 and what? It was like 3,146. <laughs> Not even 100 points off. You're like <laughs> 79 points away from the top score, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Give me, give me till tomorrow morning. I don't sleep. So I'm like, <laughs> I'll be up all night beating this. That's, that's <laughs> what I said. And he's, he's in a different time zone. So he's going to bed pretty soon. So, you, so you're going to have him beat by the morning. Advantages, oh, advantages. Yeah. Oh, um, Ms. Sherpa, um, I got a, uh, um, for the final answer, I got 466 millimeters of mercury. mercury. All right, let me do it real quick here. What was the temperature is 25 degrees, right? Mm-hmm. And the volume is two liters. So what did you say you got? I got 466, which is one uh, thing. Oh, but yeah, we're in the same ballpark. Um, so... This is, yeah, so actually what Aaron just asked me is actually really important for everybody if you're still listening. Um, that 467, 466, we're in the same ballpark, 465. So what I'm showing you on there is why I covered this up. This is actually how I did it. Um, I didn't even do it all this way because you don't actually need the R. Um, you can set it up as a ratio problem. It's just the two ratios. Yeah. So you remember, um, you can set it up as P, PV over T plus PV over T will equal the final PV over T. <laughs> and so that's actually how I kind of did it the first time. And then I was like, well, I should find the moles. 
So you could actually technically do it that way. Um, and it, it will work. So anyway, all right, I'm going to move on to hopefully the correct next page. Do you guys have questions on that? I, I had told myself I need to make an easier question. And so I cut part of it out and now I think my page, I'm going to flip my page. Oh, that's the page I want. So this is a page with lots of words. And this is uh, probably our, one of our most important pages. Sorry, I'm missing a page of notes. Um, so when you do the homework set, the very last page, the first three pages of the homework set are just math. They're pretty straightforward. Um, they're just figuring out which formula you want to use and just plugging in. Uh, the very last page is the theory, which is what this page is about. So if you guys are ready, we're going to go through this page, um, which has a lot of words. And I sat down because I wanted to redo it. And I don't know. I just figured as I went through it, we would just talk about it. Um, so gas laws, this is the theory that goes with gas laws because it turns out gas laws are just a theory. Um, there are assumptions that are made along the way. And so these are the four big assumptions that are made. Put my cow there to hold it down. Uh, and so the first one is that the particles themselves don't, the atoms or the molecules themselves don't take up any space. That the space between all the gas particles is so much bigger that this should be like 20 greater than signs uh, that we can ignore the size of the particles themselves, but they do take up a little bit of space. Um, the fact that gases take up, that there's so much space in between the gas particles allows you to compress gases, which is something you cannot do with solid and liquids. Um, a lot of you are engineering majors, and so fluid mechanics um, actually does go through the fact that you can compress liquids a very wee bit. And then, of course, we've made a lot of new solids like styrofoam and stuff. Styrofoam, you can compress down to almost nothing. Um, that's because it's filled with air or a gas. Anyway, this, this is probably why I highlighted that, is that gases can be compressed, which is something that is unique to them, saying the word unique in quotes. Um, another thing that is important about gases, and I did mention this, and it is the idea of what the word gas means, which is chaos, is they are always moving. There is nothing happening, and they're moving in straight lines until they run into something else. And then, so it's the game of pool or billiards um, that they run into something and they'll go off at angles and stuff. Uh, there, this, this is actually really cool. This is something I had Googled that oxygen is actually moving at around a thousand miles per hour. So all of us in our individual rooms, um, and in every second, there's over 5 billion collisions going on with that each oxygen. Um, where this comes into are these two terms, the words diffusion and effusion, uh, for you don't really need to know what they mean. You can always Google it, uh, but they are something that gases do. So if I had, I always do this like with the lecture room where you guys are in different rows, but if I had a bottle of um, say rotten eggs, right? Since you guys all just denatured your eggs. But if you had a bottle of, of rotten eggs and I opened it, the people who were sitting in the front row, which would have been like Janae and Jessica, right? They always sat in the front row. They would have immediately smelled it. And then the second row, the people in the back would be saying, what's going on? But that's the idea of diffusion, that the gas particles have to slowly move and take up the whole room. Um, and they start colliding with each other. And as they collide, they start taking up more and more space. So it's not like an immediate thing, even though it does happen relatively fast. Effusion is how they isolated, one of the ways they isolated uranium-235. Um, Isaac talked about this some last term. So if you have a really small hole, um, 
something that is smaller is going to get through that small hole faster. So like on's the smallest one of all of us here. And so if I said, you guys all have to get through this hole to pass the test, she's going to make it through faster than everybody else because she's the smallest one of us. But um, the idea is, is smaller. It comes up later on that as you increase the size, you're going to decrease um, the rate of effusion or diffusion. So it's an inverse relationship. And how I often, like where the question usually comes would be if we had our periodic table, the periodic table, and we were looking at the noble gases, um, helium is going to be the smallest one. So it's going to diffuse and effuse faster than xenon or radon, which are much larger. So there's uh, a direct inverse relationship between how fast gases move and the size of them. And I always call it the Thanksgiving effect because on Thanksgiving, when you keep eating more and more food, you start moving slower and slower and slower. Um, and that actually goes with step number three. You don't have to remember these in order. It's more, but this is kind of the idea that as they get larger, they decrease their rate. Um, and it goes this, I don't, I don't do anything with this formula. Um, when you take physics, you will get to do a lot with it. Uh, the, the little V there, velocity, is what's called RMS speed, which is root mean square. So speed can be positive or negative, um, depending on what direction you're moving in. And so the root mean square is, in case you're moving backwards, you have a negative speed, you square it, which will make it a positive number and then you take the square root. So um, that's, that's all it means. Don't let it confuse you. Just if I ask RMS speed, just say, okay, she's just asking how fast it goes. And again, how fast something move is inversely related to their size. The M here stands for molar mass. So again, it is an inverse relationship. Um, to do the math, you can't actually mathematically solve it. And this R is a different R than the one that we were using. Um, and that is probably why I don't do the math with this at this point in the class, because a lot of students got confused on which R we were using. So again, size and rate are opposite or inversely related. And the reason for that is this step right here where it says kinetic energy, this little fish means proportional. So Ke is kinetic energy, and kinetic energy, if you took physics, or when you take physics, this will be one of the things that gets ingrained into you. Kinetic energy is equal to mass times velocity squared. So this is a little v. So this m is mass, um, and this v is velocity squared. And the kinetic energy is always proportional to the temperature. So as you increase the temperature, you increase the kinetic energy and vice versa. So that's what I've been teaching you about jiggles and wiggles is how I think about it. So as you increase the jiggles, everything's jiggling more. As you increase the temperature, you have more jiggles and wiggles. Uh, and the line over the kinetic energy means average kinetic energy. So at a given temperature, so the temperature in the room where you're sitting right now watching this, um, all the gas particles have the same kinetic energy. However, they're all different because they all have different, they all have different velocities because they have different masses. And so that's back to the statement, as you increase the size, you decrease the rate. So there's two things that are determining the rate. As you increase the temperature, you're always going to make it move faster and faster and faster. And that's because if we increase the temperature, you start jiggling and wiggling and moving and everything like that. But um, smaller ones are always going to be moving faster. So there's, as mass goes up, velocity goes down to keep the kinetic energy the same. There's a cool demo, which none of you are going to be able to do because you probably don't have a whole organ pipe. Um, but you can fill 
Um, if you have, if you've ever been to like an old church where they have the full organ and they have all the different pipes, uh, the organ has so many different sounds because every pipe is a different uh, radius, dimensions, and it is the dimensions of those pipes that determines uh, the vibrations in there. And so everything with music, um, which Aaron would know, Aaron, you played the trumpet. I don't know if any of the rest of you played an instrument, but it is actually in the lab when you pull up um, the gas law lab, uh, that is one of the choices is something you can do is you play a musical instrument for the whole week. Uh, you don't have to record. You can play for us if you want, but um, I just figured with everybody's going stir crazy out there in the world and so playing music. So it can be piano, anything, because that is sound uh, and that does deal with all of these things. All right, the fourth step is the idea, um, this is a huge assumption that every collision that gases make is elastic. So elastic collisions means that when um, the two gases collide, that they maintain the same kinetic energy and they just bounce off of each other. That's not perfectly true because there's always going to be a very weak attraction when they run into each other. And so they're going to lose a little bit of their momentum. Um, and that, that's why it says weak IMFs. Those weak IMFs are going to make it that the collisions are not going to be 100% elastic. Um, it kind of goes back to the idea of Galileo's perfect surface. There is no such thing, but on Galileo's frictionless surface, once you tap the ball and it starts moving, it never stops moving because it never encounters any friction or anything to slow it down. So once you tap it, it keeps moving. Um, and that would be the same idea with gases, but it's not perfectly true. Um, and so this is Van der Waals equation. So remember Van der Waal was one of the names for the induced dipole or London forces. Um, Van der Waal said that the ideal gas law is not actually perfect. PV equals NRT. This isn't a box. We actually used to do a lab with this, but you're not gonna have to do anything. Um, you don't need to know this formula um, other than that I mention it. Um, this term here, the B minus NB, the volume is never perfect because the atoms themselves do have a volume. It's a really, really, really small volume. The atoms do themselves have a space. So this capital V is the space in between, and this minus NB means we have to take out, it's back to that thing at the top where it says that we're 99.96% nothingness. That 0.04% is what he's factoring in here. And then this part is that pressure has to do with collisions, and the assumption is that every collision is perfectly elastic. But that's not true because there's always a little bit of attraction and this is what his term is there and so um, that's kind of what this page is going over and this picture here is just one of those pictures you'll find online they're trying to show the gases are always moving and they're they're moving in straight lines that's another huge assumption so these are assumptions with gas laws um, what you're gonna find on the last page of your homework is questions like 13 and 14, and I do wanna go over those and paper. Um, so the assumption, it says, assume that you have a cylinder and the piston moves. So you kind of have, this is my drawing, right? And so we can make it smaller or larger. Um, and so it wants to know what's gonna to happen to the pressure inside when we make each of these changes. So if you double the volume, what's gonna to happen to the pressure? Well, if you remember, we talked about as you increase the volume by twofold, well then the pressure should decrease. So we should now be at half the pressure. Um, and, and that just has to do with they're inversely related. But if you have more space, when I say explain at the molecular level, this is what we were talking about um, the other, what I was talking about the other day that the volume is more space, so doubling the volume, uh, you're going to have fewer collisions. 
which is half the pressure. Uh, if the kinetic energy is constant. And that means constant temperature. And again, for temperature, you can use the scientific term of kinetic energy. You can just say jiggles and wiggles and giggles, whichever word you like, or you can come up with your own word for movement. Um, on the second one, if we increase the temperature threefold, what happens to the pressure? Well, if you go a threefold increase in temperature, you're going to have more jiggles, right? And more jiggles or more kinetic energy means you're going to have more collisions. And they are directly proportional. So if everything's moving, if I gave you guys a whole bunch of sugar, like tripled your sugar intake right now by threefold, you would start running into each other. Even though Aaron's all the way in Missouri and we're all quarantined in our houses here. So we'd see a threefold increase in pressure. So when you see me ask, when, when you see me, when I ask you questions to explain it, this is what I'm asking for. And you would say, because it's all in the same space volume. So if volume's constant, it's all in the same space. Um, now, for me, that's, for, for probably half of you, it's a logics thing and that, that's perfectly fine. There's always some students, um, there's another way you can do it to think about it. Because um, sometimes our logical mind, like we get distractions and stuff. And you can always go back, I mentioned this the other day that you can do everything in gas laws with PV equals NRT. You can always go back to this. And I was born in October, so I'm a Libra, so I do a lot with balancing things. And so the two sides of the equation are like separate sides of a scale. So this is, this is why I had to get a PhD because my artistic skills are not always the top, but that's a scale. All right, so you can make your own elaborate, beautiful scale. Um, and so if you add, so looking at our first example here with pressure and volume, if you increase the volume by adding more, so we doubled the volume, but nothing changed on the other side of the scale. For the scale to stay balanced, if we're not doing anything on this side and we're adding more to this side, then we have to take away from the pressure. So if something, if they're on the same side of the equation, if one goes up, the other one has to go down. So what, in this PV equals NRT, one goes up, the other goes down. And same thing with temperature, when they're on opposite sides of the scale, if you increase on one side of the scale, the other side would also increase. So when they're on opposite sides of the scale or the equal sign, they always have a direct relationship. When one goes up, the other one goes up. So with that, we're going to look at question number 14. Um, you can also do this trick with PM equals DRT, which we'll look at here. Um, so for number 14, I have to make a list because that's the only way I can know what my question is. So we have two flasks. One is going to have argon and one is going to have neon. So we have our two flasks. And they have the same volume. So volume is equal. And they're both at STP. So that means temperature is equal and pressure is equal. Now, they're not the same gas. So PV equals NRT, something has to be different. PV, R, and T are all the same. I mean, R is a constant, so we ignore it. So the thing that must be different is the moles. So we're gonna walk through this. Which one must have, well, I'm sorry, I have to back up. I just said that wrong. because Again, I've written several of these problems for your homework and stuff. And um, so let me go back. PV equals NRT. So PV equals NRT, if pressure, volume, temperature, and R are constant, then N must also be constant. Sorry, I was jumping ahead of myself and there's distractions suddenly in my house. Um, hey you guys, I'm recording and so 
Joey, I'm recording for my class. Thank you. All right, so N also must be constant or must be the same between these two flasks, but they're not the same, argon and neon. So one of them, something's not gonna be the same here. So let's walk through these steps. So which one has more molecules? So N is the same, so they're the same. If PV and T are equal, then moles are also equal. It goes back to PV equals NRT. But then it says which has the greater density. And that's, the, that's where I was jumping ahead of myself. So you may remember, I mentioned there's another equation that's really useful, which is PM equals DRT. And it also has this equal sign and the pressure, the temperature, and R are the same for both sides in this problem. The molar mass is definitely different because one's argon and one's neon, so the density is going to be different. So it wants to know which one has the higher density. Whichever one has the higher molar mass is going to have the higher density. Um, and so looking at your periodic table, that would be argon. Argon definitely wins that one. And for gas laws to be true, if you have a higher molar mass, you have a higher density. You can also go back, if they have the same number of moles, the argon moles, each molecule of argon is heavier. So you would have more mass of argon. And so that would mean you also have a greater density. So you could also explain it that way. Um, all right, C asks which one has the higher kinetic energy and the answer is the same. Does anybody know why? Which one variable tells you kinetic energy? And that would be temperature. temperature. So that's because they're all at the same temperature. Um, so when you do this in the homework, they're not going to all have the same temperature. So if it ever asks you which has the highest kinetic energy, you pick the one with the highest temperature. All right, and now it asks you which flask will empty the fastest. So since they're at the same temperature, if you have different temperatures, it's going to almost always be the one at the higher temperature is going to empty the fastest. But which one's going to empty the fastest is going to be the one that is the smallest. So you're trying to get through the hole. And so this case neon because it's smaller size. So since neon has a smaller size, it would empty faster since they are both moving at they're both jiggling and giggling the same. Um, yeah, that's uh, the last page of your homework has you walking through the theory, and so I anticipate on Tuesday we'll be spending a good amount of time going over that page, even though I'll post my answer key and you'll be able to go through it. There's usually some questions about it. And on your midterm, which is again Thursday, uh, there will definitely be a problem like this where you're going to have to compare two different things or three things and tell me which one and explain why. Um, and I'm just looking like here, they come out the same because they have the same temperature or the neon because it's smaller in size or like the question Edward had last week, it has a smaller molecular weight. Um, yeah, so questions on anything from these kind of problems and just doing more practice. You guys are all good? I'm going to move on. And I'm sure your classmates who are not here, who are here, you're just here at a different time, um, are grateful for your questions. So they told me that they're actually grateful to hear you guys ask questions. So I think this is your next page, is these problems. I'm gonna move my thing up a little bit. Is that right? I didn't, I didn't print it out because I was changing the notes around and I don't remember what I changed. Um, I'm not gonna walk through all of them. I'm just gonna, um, 
I'm just gonna kind of give you hints. The answers are there and I'm pretty confident the answers are right. Um, but I wanted to point out, I know all of them have like something to point out and then they're good practice. Cause again, you have a midterm next Thursday. You have a midterm next Thursday. She hears the neighbor's dog. She wants to go and say hi to cutie. So my dog is tiny and my neighbor's dog and they, you're gonna hear them barking at each other and then they'll start howling. All right. So it wants us to find the volume. I'm going to go through making the list. Uh, and this seven, oh, sorry, 755 millimeters of mercury. That is a pressure. And I started putting ones because I could see over here I was going to have another pressure. So I like making the list. Um, it's not a requirement. Some students will just underneath them, like label them like this, V2, and then they'll say V1 is my question mark. So you can do a list like I'm doing, like I was showing you on the board, or you can just underline them and label them like that if that works better for you. Um, but I really think what I've seen is the students who take that extra moment to make the list, they end up getting it right. And then they're not worried about, you know, having to shoot gnomes through catapults and through logs and stuff and trying to beat Aaron. And all right. Um, if you make the list, the other thing is it points towards which gas law. Uh, so something else I want to mention, I told you you want everything nice and neat so you can do your test and not have to be flipping through papers and like pulling your hair out and going crazy. So what I would have, like basically you're getting a little note card, are these formulas. Oh wow, T2, sorry. So that's one formula. Um, for this, we're gonna ignore the N and the T because there's no change in them. It actually tells you here, this is a question Janae had asked me, um, that the T and the N are constant, so we can ignore it. So you're gonna state your formula, P1, V1 equals P2, V2, and then we're gonna solve. So you can plug in and solve however you like doing it. Um, now, a question that Edward asked after I finished showing the video the other day, had to do with units and it was not, he said I didn't change my units. When you're doing PVT this, when you're not using R, the units just have to match up. So I don't have to go to ATMs on this problem because the millimeters of mercury are the same. Um, if you see that, when you can leave it in, eight, in millimeters of mercury, then just keep it in millimeters of mercury. The question you asked me, Edward, was the cubic meter one, where I didn't change the cubic meter because both question, both volumes were in cubic meters. If you see that, then definitely it's a great step. If you're not ever not sure, always go to ATMs. All right, the other formula you got to know is PV equals NRT. So that should be on your little like note card, like so you have everything. I would make one page of notes. So as you're doing the test, you're not trying to go through everything. So kind of like when you take a physics test, I don't know if it's the same in um, Vietnam, but like here, everywhere you take physics, you're allowed to bring in one page of notes. Um, and that way you kind of have it organized. So PV equals NRT. Now when we use this formula with the R, you have to use ATMs because of what R is. And then the other formula is PM equals DRT that really with those three formulas, everything we do in chemistry that we're gonna do, we're just gonna use one of those. Um, and so the combined gas law. And then you can also write down what R is. Although if you do your homework and your worksheet, you're gonna know R, it's gonna be stuck in your head. Um, but R is the 0 0.082057. Uh, ATM, yeah, because times liters per mole K. All right. 
and then my answers for those of you who are new to me um, my answers are here in the parentheses so when you work through it at home all right looking at the second one so it says what is the temperature these all go together and mine just says millimeters it should say millimeters of mercury um, so T1 equals question. I, I call the first set always ones and the second set of information my twos. Um, on these two problems, the question is at the beginning. So my unknown is a V1 or a T1. And then I would say, okay, my V1 is 5.78 liters. My P1 is 735 millimeters of mercury. Um, and then these would be my twos. So making your list is really helpful. Um, so we have a T2, a V2, and a P2. And I'm not going to finish the list. You guys can do that. But a couple things, actually, I am going to finish it. My V2 is 6.19 liters, 18. Um, there's two things I want to, three things I want to point out with this problem because they're mistakes that I've seen. One is identifying the variables correctly. So Celsius is definitely temperature, but you can never use Celsius. You must always, always, and all of you at home watching this later, you should get this ingrained. You have to always be in Kelvin. Even though I ask for you to give the answer in Celsius, you have to solve in Kelvin. So you have to add the 273 to get to Kelvin, which would be what, 291 Kelvin. Celsius never works because he did not take into effect the idea of jiggles and giggles and vib vibrations, basically. Um, millimeters of mercury, uh, ATM, and there was another unit, and that was Tor um, that we talked about. And so that could be the other thing. I'm going to put it up here. One ATM is 760 millimeters of mercury. So usually I make this nice list on the board of the things, and that is the same as 760 Tor. So those are standard pressure. Now, the comment I was making with the previous question, I don't actually change my pressures to solve this one because this is a ratio problem. It's the P1V1, it's this first formula. But before I write the formula down, there's two things with it. One is you're going to ignore the ends because nothing changed with the moles. And number two, you're solving for temperature. So I don't know if anybody remembers the other day we did one. And since temperature is on the bottom, you want to do that law of inversion. And you want to write this formula inverted on both sides. So if the question wants you to solve for temperature, this formula here, you want to flip it so the temperature is on top. And it just makes it easier to rearrange. Your P1 and B1 would then end up on top on the other side, and you just plug in. You can cross off as you solve. Your answer will be in Kelvin, and then you subtract to get back to Celsius. So another reminder is Kelvin cannot be a negative number, but Celsius can be. So, all right, I'm going to keep moving on. You guys can work through the math at home. And those of you working at home can always pause me in each one and try them. Or if you already tried it, you can fast forward. All right, so the next question right off, bam, says, what's the density? As soon as it says, what is the density? which formula at the top in your little cheat thing that you're going to make. It's not a cheat thing, your little, what's the thing, your little crutch thing, note card, that's the word I'm looking for, is this one, PM equals DRT. So you write PM equals DRT. And I just want to review this one again. So D is density, and it will be in grams per liter. M is molar mass which is grams per mole. Um, and yeah. Oh, since you're using R, 
pressure must be ATMs, and T temperature is, of course, Kelvin, and R is R. And STP, hopefully you remember, is one ATM. And we should write that down again. One ATM, 273 Kelvin. Um, yeah. All right. Number four. You do have choices on this one, but I always look at the problem. I mean, you would hope your teacher can look at the problem and figure out which formula, but just looking at it, I don't see two pressures, two temperatures, two volumes. I'm not using my first formula. PM equals DRT is, is special because it talks about density or the M is molar mass. So just a reminder that grams per mole, I call it molar mass just to try to be consistent, molecular weight, some places call it. Um, and that's not what's being asked for in number four. So on number four, I'm just gonna do PV equals NRT because I don't see another volume. So we're gonna solve for volume, state your formula, make your list. N is moles. So from the information given, how do I figure out my moles? stoichiometry yeah so the 216.8 grams of oxygen and just um because there are a handful of you who are new to me just to make sure you know how to do it that the n would be equal to 216.8 grams remember oxygen is a diatomic so gas laws we are doing diatomics um and then you would look at your periodic table. So hopefully you, you definitely will need one for doing your homework. So we find oxygen and we just double this number here, the 16. Um, so 32. Um, I, I recommend you use four sig figs with the periodic table and that will get you to your moles. And again, you can solve in your list or you can just solve the whole thing. Like for me, I would say, oh, okay, I'm gonna divide by P. And so I would just keep going. Um, R, you can just write R and then plug it in your calculator. STP temperature is 273. Um, so be careful of that. It's really easy to get the STP temperature wrong because it, it really logically doesn't make sense. And then the pressure is one ATM. So you would just plug that in and you should get my answer that's there. Um, so you have to state the formula, you have to show me your work, and you have to show how you filled in. Um, and you can, again, I recommend making a list, but that is obviously optional, uh, just to make sure that I'm being clear for everyone so that you're not like, what, I didn't know that when you take the test. Notice I'm showing my units, everything's labeled, I'm showing variables first, and then I'm showing my numbers with units. All right, number five. Erin, you're keeping track of time when you have to leave. You want to stay for at least number five. Yeah, I can um, stay. So I'm, I'm planning on staying until the end of the page. <laughs> okay. Um, you will definitely see a question like this in your homework, on your worksheet. And it's because it's got a balanced equation. It's chemistry. So gas laws kind of brings all the stuff from 221 that we really haven't done a lot with. It's suddenly we get to do it. So um, the question students will ask me is they're like, silane, what is that? Well, you guys can always Google it, but it's definitely not the O2. H2O is water and it's not silicon dioxide because um, that's a solid and it tells you it's a gas. So this is what they're talking about, that you have, I like to make the list under my equation. I have 5.55 liters, 333 millimeters of mercury, and I'm at 22 degrees Celsius. And then it reacts with oxygen. And so my oxygen, it wants to know the volume of the oxygen. So that's my question mark. And it tells you the oxygen's at 444 millimeters of mercury, and 33 degrees Celsius. 
So there are a couple different ways you can solve this one. You can do like we did on that previous page where we went through all those different steps. You can basically solve the SIH4. Sorry, I'm looking for another pen. I'm going to mention it down here. You could go through the steps where first you solve for, and, and you don't have to do it this way. You can do PV equals NRT, and you can solve for moles of the SIH4. Because if you, if you look at our list, we have all the information we need. We have PVT. And then you can do two, you can change, you can do your mole to mole ratio from your moles of SIH4 to your moles of O2. And then once you have your moles of O2, you do your PV equals NRT again. So that will go into that end and you solve for V. So you would have to label each step and just label everything. So I did this on the board because I'm going to show you a different way. Again, I'm not going to walk through all of it, but it is a really cool trick. And if you like it, but you can always, so remember this, so on your homework, on your worksheet, on your midterm, if you're ever stuck on a problem and you're not sure what to do, you can always go back and do it with PV equals NRT. It just might break it into multiple steps. Just make sure you label your steps and show your work nicely with each step. So I'm going to do this one different, or I'm going to show you a different way. I'm going to do PV over NT equals PV over NT. Um, it's a shortcut, and it's actually the same as the other one. So this is the SIH4, the SIH4. Technically, this is all, and then this is the oxygen. So I'm basically using that very first formula, the ratio, because I have a, and I'm solving for the volume of the oxygen, because I have a pressure of both of them, I have a temperature of both of them. So the question comes up is, well, what about moles? Why are we even worrying about moles? That's what the balanced equation is, and that's what the stoichiometry is, that you have one mole of SiH4. And where did I get that one from? Well, there's no number there. That's the coefficient. So for oxygen, you have two moles of oxygen because it's coefficient. It's coefficient. And so it's a really cool trick to use with balanced equations. Um, and originally, all of the stuff we did in 221, it originally came from gases. And doing works with gases and seeing the volumes changed based on um, and it's where the idea of moles and molecules came from. Um, so again, you can walk through going through all these different steps, which is perfectly fine. Or you can just do it as one ratio. If you have a balanced equation, the coefficients in the balanced equation work as your ends in this. So you just set up each equal. All right, questions on that page? I want to look at the next page and see if there's any that I want to go through. Like number six, real quick, what is the molar mass? So which formula are you going to use when it says what's the molar mass? PM equals DRT. So if it asks what's the molar mass, PM equals DRT. All right, and you would solve. Um, Seven and eight I want to talk about. Um, so. All right, Ms. Sherp, I'm going to go ahead and head out. Good. All right, thank you. Bye. Yeah. So seven's actually really simple. The question wants to know just the partial pressure of the hydrogen gas. And I think this is why I had a student and she had 100% every term. She's um, actually a good friend of mine still. Uh, and the only question she ever missed in 222, and then on the final in 223, it's always been a standardized final. I don't know what's going to happen this summer because that won't be possible since we're in this format. But um, it was the partial pressure one. And it's because there's always more information than you need. 
Um, you can ignore the oxygen and the argon for this problem because of what it's asking. It only asks about the hydrogen. So I need the mass of the hydrogen. And the thing is, is because each gas is taking up all the space, all the gases are mixed together and they're taking up all the space. This volume is your volume for the hydrogen. And the temperature is the average kinetic energy of all the gases. So the hydrogen is 88, the oxygen's 88, the argon's 88. So you're just doing PV equals NRT and you're just using these pieces of information. The other thing I want to mention is um, back in 221 and like my Chem 104, we often use this that a milliliter is equal to a cubic centimeter. You guys might remember that. Um, in gases, gases take up more space. So I like to use this conversion that a liter is the same as a cubic decimeter. So there's 10 centimeters in a decimeter, so it would be 10 times 10 times 10 or 1,000. And so um, then you would only change your meters, cubic meters to cubic decimeters. But you're just going to use PV equals NRT. And you're going to ignore the oxygen and the argon. They have no impact on this. If the question asks for the total pressure, then you would have to look at them. Um, yeah. All right. Number eight, you get to do empirical formula. Um, and number nine, yeah, I think you guys are okay. Um, a comment, like number nine, it, it's a, do you guys remember doing conversion factors? We can work it through if you want, um, but. Oh, you get to write a balanced equation too. Go ahead, did you have a question? Um, I know this happens, I think on the worksheet, that you have to write a balanced equation and um, I wanna go through it for this one. You guys do have computers in Google, but octane is C8H18 and it's telling you you're gonna produce carbon dioxide So it's sure as heck looking like a combustion problem to me that combustion means we're going to be reacting it with O2 and ending up with CO2 and H2O. So usually I give you the equation, but on things like the worksheet, you might have to write out equations. It's good practice. Just remember how to write chemical equations. And then we would balance. So the eight carbons become CO2. The 18 hydrogens become H2O, so we'd only need nine H2Os. And then remember going to figure out your oxygens. So you only need a total of 16 plus nine, so 25 oxygens. So this is going to be 12.5 to balance it. I don't know if you can read that or 25 halves, or you can do two 25, 16, 18. Um, but the other thing, yeah. So the question wants you to find the volume of the CO2 um, starting here. And it's starting with gallons. And then it gives you a density. So, to be able to do this, you're going to have to get to the moles. So step one, you have to solve for moles of the C8H18. You can do it in one huge step. And then step two, you would do, um, you'd have to change your moles of your C8H18, sorry, to your moles of CO2. And then your step three would be PV equals NRT. I, I like doing them all in one setup because um, it just looks nicer and neater. So you could do this as one big step and it would all plug into there. 
and you should get my answer. And it's going to come out pretty large. You get 18 kiloliters, so 18,000 liters. This is what a kiloliter would be. And I think that's all I got, unless you guys, I'll give you a moment to see if you have questions on anything. The answers are there, and you can always email me, any of you, or Tuesday. Um, yeah, you'll have homework and worksheet due, and so we'll have a long office hour. And just a reminder, I did post also the gas lab. Um, I, I'm giving you an extension until Tuesday the 19th to turn in that lab because Thursday's the exam. But that lab, some of the activities do require seven days. So you do want to look at that lab before Tuesday, this Tuesday, the, the 12th, um, to decide what you want to do. There's seven activities and you only have to do three of them. So you can look and decide which three you want to do. And you can absolutely do it before then, before it's due date. But so you guys are good. Thumbs up. All right, I'm going to stop my recording. We can. All right.